I'm going to give a review of the front page of the Morning Star, dated August the 31st, 1966. The editorial deals with the economic situation in the United States of America. It is only just over a month since President Johnson was brought, boasting about how well the American economy was doing compared with the British. But facts disproved his rose-colored view of the United States. Economic growth in America has slowed down, prices are going up, and, as in Britain, there are demands from business circles for an increase in unemployment. Some experts prophesy a recession in the second half of 1967. This uncertainty about the future in America, the paper goes on to say, shows the folly of tying Britain too closely to such an unstable capitalist economy. In another item, the paper comments editorially on the officially published figure for educational spending in Britain. The fact that education's share of the gross national product increased from 3.2% to 5.1% in 10 years up to 1964-1960, says the paper, shows how appallingly little was being spent before and how inadequate the spending still is. Under the splash headline, I am disgusted, Cohen tells Wilson, the front page carries an article by the Morning Star diplomatic correspondent featuring some of the Commonwealth Premier's opinions of Britain's policy towards the illegal Smith regime in Rhodesia. President Cohen of Zambia announced that he would not come to the Commonwealth Premier's conference in London because of his utter disgust with Mr. Wilson's handling of the rebel Rhodesian settler regime. Zambia may even leave the Commonwealth, he added. The center of the page is taken up by two pictures from Vietnam, one showing the National Liberation Front Central Committee in session, the other two Vietnamese child victims of U.S. Napalm bombing. Right below the picture, there's a report of a recent U.S. air raid on a suburb of Hanoi, in which nine children under 12 were among civilians killed or wounded. The front page carries several items dealing with the opposition to the government's wage freeze policy. Three unions decided to vote against the government's pay standstill at the Trades Union Congress at Blackpool reports George Sinfield. The Shop Workers Union is opposed to the freeze. The solution of the economic problems confronting us does not lie in the wage freeze and unemployment, says the editorial of the Union's monthly journal, briefly reviewed by a Morning Star reporter. There is also a short item concerning a strike of 120 inspectors who walked out when their employers failed to concede a bonus payment negotiated before the wage freeze. In the right-hand column of the page, there is a brief news item about Mr. George Brown's prospective visit to the United States, where he will have talks in Washington in October after attending the General Assembly of the United Nations in New York. This column also contains a message to the Morning Star by Mr. Ernie Roberts, Assistant General Secretary of the Amalgamated Engineering Union, in which he states that the Morning Star is indispensable reading for all trade unionists. A picture of Mr. Roberts is given on the page. At the bottom of the, of the page, there are more brief news items reporting President de Gaulle's visit to Cambodia, the trial of a group of men who appeared in a London court on torture charges and road accidents during the four-day August holiday period. The front page carries the Morning Star appeals for more donations and new readers.